ready to give it into a new Okay. Okay, well, I think let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. I think we're, we're there. <clears throat> so good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order the Virtual Planning Commission meeting of June 18th, 2020. I'd like to remind everyone to please silence all electronic devices and mute your microphones while not speaking. Uh, what this time I'd like to ask everyone to stand for the Moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, God. Madam Clark, would you call the roll, please? Jean. Jean Here. Michael Cox. Here. Peter Hansel? Here. Roberto Sai? He's not on here. I think he said he couldn't be here. Christopher Poole? Here. Chris no. Williams? Here. Chris Williams? Anyone here Cameron from the board? Chairman Charles Gray. I'm here. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, for those uh, of you who are, who are on the call and have not attended the meetings, let me go over the uh, program with you. The Planning Commission serves as a local planning agency. Planning Commission holds public hearings, transmits to the Board of County Commissioners uh, recommendations on comprehensive plan amendments, plan development code amendments, rezonings and conditional uses. The Planning Commission is the final decision-making body for special, uh, special exceptions, certain appeals, variance requests, certain alternative standard requests. However, final decisions may be appealed to the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, if anyone is in opposition to any comprehensive plan amendment, land development code amendment, rezoning, conditional use, or any item where the Planning Commission transmits a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners, it's important for you to attend the appropriate Board of County Commission meeting. Uh, we have minutes I think we need to approve. Do we have a motion? Yes, Jamie Girardi, I'll move we approve the minutes from the May 21st meeting. All right, Chris, hold on one second, please. The, the clerk has something to say. Clerk? I need to know the proof of publication. Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. The items were advertised in the Tampa Bay Times on May 24, 2020 and June 10, 2020. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, Jamie, I believe you made a motion to approve the minutes. Somebody seconded it. Who was that? Chris Poole. Chris Poole seconded. Uh, all in favor? Signify by saying hi. Roll call. Jamie Girardi. Aye. Michael Cox? Aye. Peter Hansel? Aye. Christopher Poole? Aye. Chairman Charles Gray? Aye. Okay, so the next uh, area is the public comment. Uh, we'll take public comment for items not on the, on the agenda today from callers. That have pre registered and are currently on queue. Uh, do we have any of those? Denise? Not for this section of the agenda. We do have four or two callers actually on the line for item PC5. Okay. Thank you. 
So for the public hearing, public hearing procedures, the phone uh, phone call and web participants, including the applicants who have pre-registered for the virtual planning commission meeting, will be notified by county staff when they will be permitted to speak. Applicants will be limited to five minutes and other participants will be limited to three minutes unless the additional time is approved at least 24 hours uh, prior to that. I believe we have one thing. Is that right, Denise? Yes, we have two actually. You have the um, applicant for item PC5 and you have an objector for item PC5. The applicant's been granted a total of 10 minutes and the objector who's on the phone has been gra granted a total of six minutes. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, callers, uh, um, when you come onto the phone, the things that we'll need from you are the name, uh, your address, the agenda item, and the agenda title. After the phone call, the WebEx participants will be read into the public uh, comments, documents, points, or videos uh, that have been identified by members of the public to be read out loud or played at the meeting, limited to five minutes for applicants and three minutes for participants. Today, we have a public hearing, four public hearing, hearing items on the consent agenda. These will be approved by roll call vote unless uh, the item is full consent from consent. Once a motion is made on the consent agenda, the PC member will, uh, who makes the motion will state their name and the uh, planning commission member who seconds it will also state their name and then we'll have a roll call vote. All right, so if all that's clear, I guess we can start on the first one, Denise. Yep, ready. Um, so I both on items PC1 and PC2, you're sitting as a local planning agency on those items. Mm -hmm. Item PC1 is PDD 20-0593 in the name of Bexley South um, Development Agreement. It's an agreement between Pasco County and NNP Bexley LLC in connection with the construction of the, exist, of, the of the extension of turn lanes on State Road 54 at, at Suncoast Parkway. On this item, we ask that you find it consistent with a comprehensive plan and recommend uh, approval to the Board of County Commissioners. All right, is there anybody here to speak on that? The applicant is physically present. Okay, uh, but no one else. So, uh, all right, that, so that will remain on consent. Um, number two, PC2. PC2 is PDD 20-0605, a development agreement in the name of Causeway Commercial Center, MPUD, Master Plan Unit Development. It's a development agreement amendment between Pasco County and Hagman Groves, Inc. in, con in connection with the development of Causeway, Causeway Commercial Center, Master Plan Unit Development. And this comes to you with a recommendation of that you find it consistent with a comprehensive plan and that uh, you recommend approval to the Board of County Commissioners. All right, and is the applicant present? Yes, physically present. I mean, virtually present, sorry. And no one here to object? No. All right, PC3. PC3 is PDD 27485. On this item, you're back as the planning commission, not the local planning agency. This is a zoning amendment in the name of Pasco County Facilities Management, Duke Energy, Florida, LLC. This is a change in zoning from MPUD Master Plan Unit Development District to AC Agricultural District. And this comes to you with a recommendation of approval. All right, the applicants present virtually? Yes. Okay, no one here to object? No. Okay, uh, next PC4. Item PC4 is PDD 27486. It's a special exception in the name of Pasco County Facilities Management, Duke Energy, Florida, LLC. This is a companion item to item PC3. So it's being run concurrently, but if it's approved today, it will not take effect until such time as the board adopts PC3. It's a special exception for an electrical substation, lay down yard and or storage areas in an AC agricultural district. Comes to you with a recommendation of approval with conditions as contained in your, your agenda packet. 
All right, and the applicant's virtually present? Yes. All right. Uh, anyone here to object? No. Okay, any comments from the uh, board? If not, uh, we may, I'll hear a motion to approve the consent agenda item to submit it. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve PC1, PC2, PC3, and PC4. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second, oh. Michael Cox. Okay, seconded by Michael Cox. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion signify by a roll call vote. Amy Girardi? Aye. Michael Cox? Aye. Peter Hansel? Aye. Christopher Poole? Aye. Chairman Charles Gray? Aye. Okay, the following item, which is PC5, but it's listed as a regular item, I am going to um, um, put up the presentation and uh, as stated, uh, the applicant has 10 minutes and um, an objector who's on the phone has uh, six minutes. So just a moment while I got, get that out to you. Okay. Item PC. Everybody, sorry. <laughs> Item PC5 is PDD 20 CU 27, a conditional use approval for a vacation rental, short term rental in an R1MH single family mobile home district in the name of Camping Oasis LLC. Okay. It is located on the east side of Amanda Avenue, approximately 265 feet south of Hudson Avenue. Subject site contains a single family dwelling and was previously used as a long term rental. On December 3rd, 2018, the property owner received an ordinance violation warning notice for operating the site as a vacation rental, short term rental without prior approval. The owner applicant is seeking approval in order to resume the use of the site as a vacation rental, short term rental in compliance with Land Development Code Section 402.5b. Um, a little bit more background a vacation rental formerly known as a short-term rental is defined as dwelling units that have been advertised as available more than three times per year for periods fewer than 30 days at a time for use occupancy or possession by persons other than the owner ldc section 402.5b provides that exception for vacation rentals grandfathered pursuant to ordinance 99-21 Existing or future dwelling units may not be utilized for vacation rental purposes unless specifically authorized through conditional use process or an MPUD zoning amendment. The subject application was accompanied by a petition in favor of the application signed by the owners of a minimum of 51% of the lots in that neighborhood, uh, Gulf Breeze Heights. Here's a look at the surrounding zoning. Okay. The future land use is ROR. And here's an aerial showing the access to the site from um, Amanda Avenue via Hudson Avenue to the north. Okay. We have uh, some recommended conditions. Conditional use could be limited to the 0.18 acre property as submitted with the application. The owner shall comply with the provisions of LDC section 402.5B including but not limited to 402.5B.8 post-approval notification requirements, 402.5B.9 registration annually, and 402.5B.10 requirements for operation. The owner applicant shall, require, shall comply with the requirements of the county's tourist development tax and collections, Chapter 102 of the Pasco County Code and Section 125.0104, Florida statutes and shall in, com in accordance with section 102-108 Pasco County Code remit such payment to the county tax collector. The owner shall comply with the Pasco County vacation rental reopening plan for vacation rental operations during the ongoing safe smart step-by-step -step plan for Florida's recovery. And the approval is subject to the provisions of LDC section 402.4J 
revocation of special exception and conditional use approvals. In addition to complying with the above conditions, no activity shall commence on the site until such time as the acknowledgement portion of the agenda memo is completed, including notarization. And this comes to you with a recommendation of approval with the conditions as we read. I'm here for any questions. Thank you, Christina. Uh, is the uh, applicant present? Uh, yes, the applicant is virtually present. Okay, does it, I understand we have somebody that wants to uh, speak against it. Um, does the applicant want to withhold their time until after they, they hear what the objection is? Or do they want to speak now? Ms. Anziani, you'll have to um, answer the question that was uh, posed by the chairman. Do you want to do a presentation now or do you want to limit your comments until after the objector provides the, her comments? I, I can do either or. Um, I'm ready for a presentation and I can answer questions. And I can okay. also. Um, why don't. OK, why don't we get you sworn in? So why don't you uh, provide your first name, last name, address, and then the clerk will swear you in. Uh, yes, my name is Maricela Anziani. Uh, my address is 51 Emerald Bay Drive in Oldsmar, Florida, 34677. And I am the owner, um, only uh, sole proprietor of the company Camping Oasis. Okay, and now the clerk will swear you in, so just a moment. Do you swear or from the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, is the, is the gentleman behind you going to be speaking also? He's the owner of, uh, he's my next door neighbor. He's on the call, he's waiting. Yeah, but uh, is, if he's gonna be speaking, he needs to be sworn in as well. Oh, sure. Well, if, let's have him identify himself first. We need your name yeah. and address. My name is John Merritt. I live at 14126 Amanda Avenue in Hudson, Florida, 34677. Okay, uh, David, the issue is Mr. John did not sign up to speak. So I don't have him as a person that has been signed up to speak on this item. That's okay. I mean, if the applicant wants to use him as a witness, that's fine. Okay, thank you. We, we registered him, but it was uh, after 5 p.m. yesterday. So um, I knew that all uh, people being registered had to be in before 5. So maybe that's the reason. Okay, well, let's get him sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth to help you God? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, very good. Um, so would you like to go now or would you want to wait to hear what the objections are? For me? No, I'm talking about the property. Um, well, I I don't um want to bring something that's obvious. Um, like, you know, the 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 fact that um this project will benefit not just the county but the community and um i'm willing to comply with all the requirements that yeah, that, those the are those are all conditions. those are all things that you can say when you make your presentation so i just need to know whether you want to do that up front or you want to do it after you hear the objections okay well i'll, I'll go ahead with something that i've already uh prepared for a presentation okay um, just remember uh, you're, you've got limited time so, okay. Okay. So um, again, I thank the opportunity to present my uh, application for conditional use. To, um have application rental on my property on Amanda Avenue. Um, a little bit about myself. I have 12 years in real estate. And um, before that, I was in the hospitality industry. Um, that's why I'm trying to combine uh, both, which I think is um, you know, something that is it's going to uh, thrive my business. Uh, we know Florida is a very popular destination and vacation rentals are a way to not only boost the tourism sector, but also bring a positive economic impact uh, to the city and county. Um, this happens in many ways. It increases property values. It provides the county with additional income through tax revenues and also guests help the community in terms of economic benefit because they will spend their money in visitor related amenities such as restaurants and bars and, and everything that is in the surrounding area. Um, I bought this house on Amanda Avenue in August of 2017. This house at the time was almost a teardown. 
Um, I like the area. I saw tons of potentials for the vacation rental. So um, I just um, started fixing it. Um, the location seemed to be perfect. It's in a private that is surrounded by commercial properties. Um, out of 21 letters that I sent out, only four are residential homes. Um, it's right next to US 19, only a mile away from Hudson Beach, which is small and usually frequency, frequented by locals, but um, more vacationers are discovering it and it's a nice place to visit. People come here, especially in the winter months, um, to relax, walk, walk by the water, go out on their boats, uh, watch the amazing sunsets, enjoy the restaurants and bars in the area without any parking problems or overcrowding like you see in other beaches like, you know, like Clearwater, for example. Um, I started fixing this house little by little with any help I could get. It took me six months. Um, I actually spent more money than I that I ex um, expected. And I kind of realized that it would have been better to knock it down and build a new one. But I do want to mention this because um, I actually used the neighbors uh, to help me fix the house. I hired um, Rick, who is Janine Bruno's husband, right next to me on the north side of my property. And I also hired Tyler Pennison, who is um, the son. Um, he's deceased, um, but he's the son of Darlene Deegan, who's uh, straight across from me. Um, and unfortunately, he passed away. He had an addiction problem, and he was in and out of jail, and he overdosed in, in the mom's backyard. But um, so um, after I finished all the work, after the six months that I was here, I did advertise my property, and I started renting it through Airbnb. And I was very happy with the results. The Airbnb platform made it really easy to work with the guests and it also provided a million dollars in liability insurance. So I feel I felt very uh, secure to do the business. And I started getting very good reviews and I actually reached what they call a super host. So everything was going well until I was approached by Darlene Deegan, which I um, um, that, that's the person that's opposing. Um, and she's the neighbor across the street, the mother of Tyler, who passed away. She offered to do some housekeeping for me. I didn't really want to get the neighbors that involved into my business, so I decided not to hire her. And later after that, I got a warning from count the county letting me know that short-term rentals are not allowed and I needed to uh, get a permit. Um, and and if, I needed, if I wanted to rent my property, I had to do it with a minimum of 30 days, uh, which is what I started to do. Um, just allowing people to stay on a month to month basis. Um, during that time, um, my, the, the person that's opposing called code enforcement a few times and they knocked on the people that were living here. Everybody had to say, no, we're here for 30 days. We're here for 30 days. Uh, Victoria is very familiar with this situation because she would call me every time. She's a lady that uh, works in code enforcement. So, um, <laughs> I went because of the difference in, and because I realized that the income from renting month to month is significantly lower than renting short term, I decided to go through all the channels and, and I even told um, um, Victoria that I was uh, just finding out how to uh, fulfill all the county re requirements and try to continue what I just was a very strong the nature, we're getting close on time. It, it has taken me a while to learn and contact all the owners of the subdivision because mostly um, it's commercial lots. But I did collect all the signatures and I submitted the paperwork and I be because I believe it's all worth it. And you know, I'm trying to hurry up. I know I am the first person in the county to request additional use for, for short-term rentals, but there are already many vacation rentals in Pasco County operating without permits. I checked every this morning and despite of the COVID-19, there's at least 12 properties within one mile radius of my property offering accommodations. And they range from $79 to 400 per night. So I really feel the county is losing revenue and I hope that we can make this a win-win-win uh, for everyone. I know other counties do it and, and allow it. And I think this type of vacation rental business is gonna become a high, in higher demand with travelers now that there's a need for social distancing. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any questions from the board? So I have a few questions. Go ahead, Michael. All right. Um, Ma'am, um, so you bought the property in 2017, you said? I bought it in August of 2017, yes. Okay, and you rented it from that time until when? Um, I started renting it about March of 2018. 
I, I, mean, I could be more accurate if I go back and, and look. Um, but it was six months after I bought it, more or less. And you stopped renting it when? Um, as soon as I got the first warning, which, I, again, I would have to look at um, the records because I don't have an exact time. But it was probably, I was successful and not having any problems and not thinking that I needed any permits. I want to say at least uh, six months into renting it. Okay. And when you, you were doing the construction on it, um, did I read correctly that you didn't have permits to do the construction? Um, I made a space, I, have, I made a porch, a habitable space. Um, and I guess um, I didn't think because it was already with the structure, I didn't think that I needed a permit. So now I'm having to deal with that, which is that part of the house is already resolved. But this house has had also unpermitted work that came from before I bought it. So that's why the, um, that part, that portion of, um, you know, the, 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 the court and the case hasn't um, been resolved is because there's unpermitted work from 2002 and unpermitted work from 2004. So I got engineer, I got an engineer, I got a, an architect and a licensed contractor all trying to meet building codes and meeting require, uh, uh, meeting the, all the requirements so that it can pass all the inspection. Right now, um, I'm kind of waiting because it, it, all the process has been delayed. Uh, I guess, you know, the, the plans and, and the permits and everything, you know, goes hand to hand and, and the county is taking a little longer than, you know, usual uh, to get back to me in certain things, but um, I'm moving forward with everything. Okay, and then um, the, you stated that the people renting from you um, were told to stay that you were there for more than 30 days? Um, I was renting everybody through Airbnb. So, you know, it was um, Victoria that said, hey, you cannot use Airbnb anymore, VRBO, any of these sites and offer short-term rentals. If you want to continue that, you need to uh, do a 30-day minimum, which is what I did. So everybody that would uh, ask to come, I would have to book for 30 days. Okay, so from from March of 2018 until I'm going to say, well, when you were found in violation of the ordinance. So when you were renting it, um, do you have proof that you were complying uh, by paying the sales tax and tourism taxes? Um, yeah, I actually have um, losses and gains from both properties because I also um, own the one next to it. So I am in the process of getting all that together. And like I said, the, the gains from Airbnb is all itemized. They make it very easy. They collect the sales tax so that homeowners don't have to deal with that. They collect the occupancy tax. Um, I can show how they break it down on the, on the website. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like very easy to you know, just put what the profit was, and and just like deduct uh, any expenses from there. Um, okay, so then question. I have a couple questions for staff. Do you want me to do that now? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Michael. Let's we'll deal while we're on the subject. Michael, go okay. ahead. Okay. Um, so, Christine, um, have we verified that um, the Taxes, sales tax, and rentals have been paid? Uh, no, we have not verified that the taxes have been paid. Okay. Um, as a vacation rental, the property taxes have been paid, but as a vacation rental, no. Okay. Um, you stated, and I can't find it in the in the uh, documents, um, but you said that there was 51% 50, of the people in the area approved so what how many people are that are they and how many of them are actually residents so the um the way the neighborhood is laid out there are several lots that are owned by the same owners so in order to get her 52 percent it was only um it was only six individual owners who had to sign the petition uh one owner owns eight lots in the neighborhood 
uh, so like she was saying, some of them, one of the, the sections is a, a commercial lot, camping world. So they operate a business there. It's not, not a residence. Um, one of them, I believe, is a rental. And, um, and I believe the gentleman that's here as offering as her witness, I believe he is, he is a resident of the neighborhood. Okay, and then how many oppositions have we, have we gotten? Uh, well, we have one person that's on the line in opposition. One person uh, in addition had registered to speak, but they are not present. Okay. Um, and so I have another question of the applicant. Um, so my question to you is, so you're, you're a professional real estate agent, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm assuming that you, you know the laws about rental and buying I'm property. I'm learning uh, about it. Say that again. I'm learning about it. Okay. I guess my question is why didn't you comply prior to getting caught? Uh, because I didn't that I needed a permit. I just did some of the research and seeing that there are many properties in the area that are doing it. And I just honestly didn't think that I needed a permit. But once I found out that I needed it, I started pursuing my permit. And like I said, um, I think it was just because of that bad neighbor that, you know, always are is looking at other people's business that, you know, I kind of had all these problems, but, um, you know, I, I honestly didn't, uh, I didn't know any better pretty much. Now I'm just trying to do things right. Yeah. Well, I find that a little hard to believe because you're a professional real estate agent and I'm assuming that you would know that well, you in case be rentals, I know you and going, and taxes. going to the County and inquiring about these things. I mean, I find that a little hard to believe. It's not like, you know, you have some business that doesn't deal with these types of issues. So, well, when I see people buying houses and just renting them, and um, honestly, this is not my part of the business. I do um, real estate sales. Um, I, from the beginning, I've been dealing with first time buyers. Slowly, I started getting more into investors. And when I started working with investors, when I found out about Airbnb, I do some of traveling myself. I've stayed at Airbnbs. I've talked to Airbnb owners and they didn't mention anything about requiring any permits. They all said um, how profitable the business is. So I guess it was a lack of me um, just finding out more. I just was excited about finding a place that I could potentially use as, you know, a vacation rental. All right, I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, just touch on that subject. I thought I heard you say originally that your your uh, Airbnb connection actually collects the taxes and pays. Them. Is that correct or not? Yes. Well, VRBO and Airbnb have um, the sales tax that collect. They collect it from the people that are paying. So I don't have to deal with any of that. They already and they uh, offer the liability insurance so that the homeowner doesn't have to deal with that. I guess that's why it's so easy for people to just say that, you know, they have a vacation rental. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions of the applicant? All uh, right. Well, uh, Mr. Go ahead, Mike. Mr. Chair, let me just ask uh, David a question uh, with the collection and payment of sales tax and tourism tax. Is that correct what the applicant is saying, David? Well, could, could somebody repeat for me exactly what the applicant said about? I can, I can say, hold on. Mm -hmm. She's saying uh, David, that uh, she works through Airbnb and their system. When they, when they bill the customer, they collect the sales tax. So they're the ones that actually collect and pay the sales tax. And then I assume they pay her. Um, I don't know. If that is how the sales tax is collected. I know that the tourist development tax is collected by the tax, tax the county tax collector. Um, it sounds accurate to me that, that, that Airbnb would collect the sales tax, but I'm actually, I don't know. 
they they pre-screen um, the guests. They take all their financial information. I don't deal with credit cards. I don't deal with any of that. Um, and I'm trying to pull a itemized uh, from you know back then, where you know it, it you can actually read it. I can I can forward it later. If, you know. Um, if I don't find it now, but I, I, I'll be able to provide that. What you're saying. So is I can provide they, the answer. What you're saying is they collect all the money and they pay you. Yes. So the only, they collect, the only their, fees too. They collect their, their service fees, all the fees and taxes they keep. And I can get the profit. Like a reservation money. system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it, so if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'm looking yeah. at um, frequently asked questions on Airbnb, and it does state that county tourist development taxes are collected, that are collected by the state are paid through Airbnb um, for certain counties, and it does include Pasco County. Okay, good. And so I also got a message from our attorney who handles this. It says that Airbnb has a contract with um, the tax collector, Fasano, and then transfers the taxes they collect to Mr. Fasano. All right, good, good information. The only other thing I want to add is I believe the conditions of approval for this matter require the applicant to pay all applicable taxes. Right. right. So I think she's so, gonna have to pay the taxes regardless. The real issue here is, is this an appropriate land use for this neighborhood? Right. That's what really planning commission needs to decide. Right, okay. All right, uh, so uh, I guess we can go to the uh, to the person that's on the, on the call for uh, as ascension. All right, we're going to connect her now. Okay. Caller, um, would you please provide your full name and your address, and then uh, you will be sworn by the clerk. Hello. Yes, would you please provide your full name and your address and um, you will be sworn in by the clerk after. Okay, my name is Darlene Deegan. I live at 14137 Amanda Avenue. And just a moment so you can be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth so help you God? Um, I didn't hear what you said. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Okay, and you have six minutes and they will start now. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I do work for Airbnb, so when I'm done, you can ask me a lot of questions because a lot of what Maricela said is not fact. Um, as a result of Maricela, who is a licensed real estate broker, sent 2007 and Camping Oasis already illegally operating a short-term rental business at 14134 Amanda Avenue since 2018. I know firsthand how it has affected me negatively with peace, enjoyment, and safety at my residence. Maricela has threatened me and continues to harass me because I reported her for renovating 14134 Amanda without permits, resulting in 30 failure to obtain required permit violations setting up an RV illegally for a second rental and operating the business of short-term rentals without proper zoning. December 7, 2018, Maricela sent me a text. Your fence is coming down and you will be fined. But if you ask me, you should actually get arrested for doing something illegal. She further threatens war. December 19, 2018, she files a false police report, 605-606, and then January 22nd, 2019, with police report 037351, saying in the false reports, I was trespassing on her property. Maricela states, call her advice she wants to speak with a deputy about protecting herself from the neighbor. Advise she is scared of the subject. For the record, I'm 69 years old, I'm five feet tall, 118 pounds. I was not on her property trespassing. Maricela is not a neighbor, but an investor with a rental property on Amanda, and she's never been a resident here. The so-called trespasser was Hudson Waterworks, who were there to read the water meter on both times. I am the one to fear Maricela, who threatens me with war. December 13, 2018, in a text, she said, I've been nice to you, but I feel you're calling out war. Please stop messing with me, Darlene. December 19, 2018, her text states, 
why are you coming in my property? I'm calling the cops right now. I got you all on camera. That day, a deputy knocks on my door and tells me Maricela sees me on her surveillance cameras trespassing on her property and is issuing me a no trespass warning. I informed the deputy I'm, I was not on her property. October 17, 2018, police report 515-533. Maricela parked her white truck in the middle of the road, making it difficult for me to back into my driveway. Maricela, her family, renters, and guests would park in the street blocking my ingress and egress. September 28, 2018, I get a text message from Maricela that reads, Darlene, one thing is people parking in your property or blocking your driveway, but the street is not yours. Please do not leave notes in people's cars. And that was my dad, by the way. Thanks. I left paper notes on the windshields of cars, not in their cars. November 17, 2018, police... Can I, can I, can I interrupt you? Can, can, I, can, I, can I interrupt you, please? Um, I, obviously, yeah. you've got a neighborhood dispute going on, but I don't know that that really has an impact on whether this is an appropriate use for vacation rentals. You have a you have a dispute with somebody who doesn't even live there, so we need to talk about the actual use and how use because, is impacting you in a negative way. Because it's she's harassing me. I have a right to my property that I moved here in 2012 into a private street with only four residents. The rest is all vacant lots. And what I have to deal with here, because I am across the street, the renters party into the night. And when the property is not rented, Maricela has overnight guests and comes and parties at the property. Her renters arrive with dogs. They open the car doors upon arrival and let the animals out unleashed who come across the street onto my property and relieve themselves with no attempt to clean it up. I mean, when I bought in 2012, I expected what I was buying to stay what it is. We had four residential properties. Doug, the owner of 14134 Amanda, rented the property on an annual basis, and there were no issues with the neighbors. Maricela purchased it and then turned it over to Camping Oasis to transfer the liability. Her Airbnb website states, Welcome to Florida. I'm originally from Venezuela. Now I'm a full-time real estate agent and manage Airbnb properties for myself and others. So she knows what she is doing here. She's been a, a Florida real estate broker since 2007. Airbnb website, December 23rd, 2018 states, Maricela had 24 reviews from past guests meaning she had a minimum of 24 separate rentals in 2018. And you have about one minute, Ms. Deegan. You will be disconnected once the minute is up. Okay, and now the statement that 51% of those signatures were from owners, that's false. She presented to, the, to, the, um, to get this to a hearing, RV World for one, it was not signed by the owner. It was signed by an officer of IV World, RV World, who doesn't own the property. She, she went and got another signature for someone she claims has a land lease. He did not obtain 51% of the owners. There were only four. And if you count the new one, she put in five residents. The rest are vacant lots with no residents on them. And the sales tax originally Airbnb when she started did not collect for Pasco Thank County. Thank you, ma'am. We're gonna we're gonna end there. Thank you. Do we have another right. person on that? Thank uh, you, Denise. Do you want to hear from the other caller that we have on this item? Uh, yes. Okay. Hello, caller. Would you please state your name and address for the record, and you will be sworn in by the clerk after. My name is Alfredo Anciani. Um, my address is uh, 5927 Tomoka Drive, Orlando, Florida, 32809. Okay, and please wait to be sworn in. Um, uh, just, just a moment, sir. You're going to be sworn in. Just a moment. Okay. 
Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth? So help you God. Yes. Okay, sir, you have three minutes and they will start now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I am Maricela's father. Uh, she bought a house on Amelia Drive on Hills of Hudson a couple of years ago. And after doing a lot of repairs, she was planning to rent this house for people to have leisure for short or long periods, spend vacations, or even here for the indefinite time. In the beginning, she wasn't aware of the necessary permits of the county, and she stopped renting the house the last year. Since then, she's doing every necessary step to get all, this, all she needs to, to rent the house properly. I've been there myself, helping my daughter on some odds and ends in the house or using the house to be closer to the beach because I live in Orlando. But uh, it is my surprise that any time that I'm there, her neighbor is taking photos of me and my car. I think that my daughter has been harassed for this neighbor and making all my daughter's purposes to be delayed. That's it. Thank you, sir, for your comments. All right, thank you. Is anyone else, Denise? No one else is on the phone, but did you want to bring the applicant back up or the Yeah, I'd like to hear back? her comment. I think she has somebody back. there too that we okay. were not allowed to speak. That, that an additional person that was on the screen. Okay. Marisela, are you there? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, I have John that wanted to say something. Yeah, I'll keep it really short. I live right okay. direct next door. I've already been sworn in. Yes. And uh, if anybody would be negatively impacted by this, it would be me. I've seen the rest of here. They're always very polite, courteous, nice people. There's not a loud party in over there, like uh, the neighbor says. Uh, I will agree with uh, one gentleman who says she has a feud with the neighbor. She has a feud with all her neighbors. <laughs> She has a video camera focused on my house, right into my windows. Something's really wrong. She tried to, I've never even met the woman. She calls the police on me. She harasses me. Every little thing she can. I don't know. Again, what's wrong with the person? But she has my grandkids scared to death. My 11 year old granddaughter won't even stay with me anymore. She's afraid she's being spied on by that lady. She, yeah, I go out in the front yard. Play with their grandkids. Her camera follows me around. Again, I, I have no objection to this at all. None. And I would be the only really person that would be negatively impacted by that would be me. If you look at the satellite, you'll see my house directly next to her. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, there is a person. I'm sorry she has to go through this. Michael, do you have a question? Well, so I do want to try to drill in a little bit more about this 51% that when you look at the map, it looks like there are a lot of commercial properties around there. So, you know, who signed this, I guess, to Christine? So all the signatures were verified by our intake, intake staff at the beginning before this application was even allowed to move forward. Um, all of the property owners were the signatures that were collected. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions? Um, all I can tell you from, from my personal experience, I've had not uh, my company has managed a number of uh, vacation rentals, and this was years ago. Um, but I mean, the experience that I had with them was that you generally got people coming. They came on vacation. They generally had money to spend. They weren't, you know, they weren't at the bottom of the barrel, and uh, they were. Uh, you know, they spent a lot of time away from the home. Uh, if they were going to Disney World, or they're going to the beach, or they're going. And the owner has to take care of the property, otherwise they can't rent for 
years. I took rent. Um, normally, most of the ones we had all had swing pools. You know, everything had to be kept up with all ridiculous. And we had a lot of those. In fact, in uh, in the Regency Park, uh, Embassy Hills area, and went to the county uh, ended uh, term rentals. You can see what happened. Now, now we got long term rentals and we got trucks parked all over the yards. So uh, we don't have any to take care of. Them. So I think, from my perspective, yeah, I would, I would prefer to have a short term rental next to me rather than somebody renting that. That I have no control over that's parking all over the yard and not taking care of the grass and, and, and then go to seed and not painting the house. You know, it's just to me, you know, I think I'm really missing the boat here, but the process, she's gotten the 51% of the people to sign, evidently. She's obviously, according to what I see, she's paying her taxes through her Airbnb network. And, you know, like she's following all the rules. She may have, as you said, Michael, she obviously didn't know the rules then she should have. I mean, I can't tell you how many times uh, being in my business that people come to me and say, you know, gee, I bought this property and I thought I could do this with it. But, you know, they never checked the zoning. They never thought to ask. They just asked somebody on the street. And uh, it happened. And probably especially happens to people who come here from another country and it's all new to them. Uh, I just think the concept of the Airbnb should be something we should you know, take a more positive approach about. That's what we're anybody else. Any other comments? So I have a question of the applicant. What what do you rent? What are your rents uh, on a nightly basis? Um, well, right now um, I have it furnished and I was renting month to month. Um, I was, um, you know, depending on, on if it was like more than three months, I would, you know, uh, kind of work with the with the renters. The last people that were here were paying 1200 a month and uh, that included all utilities. So I let me let me try to answer that question because I've handled them where we do it on a weekly basis. And I think that's really what a vacation rental can be. It can be somebody coming here for a two week vacation. And it's not uncommon to rent for a thousand dollars a week. But you gotta have a house, three, usually three bedrooms, usually with a pool. You know, the nicer you have, the more you can get. But I mean, that's that's a lot of revenue. You, if you rent it for uh, 25 or, or 30 weeks out of the year, you know, that's a good uh, it's a good amount of money for the county, and it's a good return for the for the homeowner. And they've got the incentive to to maintain it properly. Yes, make it look nice. So that that's that's really how it works, Michael. She's been renting it monthly, but that's a really a different animal. So what do you plan on renting it for when you're, if you get approval and go back up on Airbnb, what do you plan on renting it for a day? Well, I would have to do the weekly. Um, I was thinking of just like doing a little more research in the area, but I know that um, hotels, just a room with two beds and a bathroom are $80 a night. So here you have two bedrooms, you have a big backyard. Um, I allow people to bring their dogs. Um, it's, it's not a huge house, but you got the areas, you got a living room, you got a dining room, kitchen. So, you know, it's all centrally um, air, AC. Um, like I said, I, I updated this property and I, I put granite tops on the kitchen, you know, when this was a rundown house. So uh, I was thinking of making at least $100 a night um, so like 700 a week would be my rate is what I'm kind of thinking now, but it all depends on demand. Because I can go up and down from that. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I will tell you on a personal side, um, we had a short-term rental in, in the neighborhood in which I lived in, and 
uh, we had nothing but complaints from the neighbors because they were constantly being asked, you know, well, what's the best way to get to Disney World? What's the, you know, what restaurant should I go to? What, where's the beach at? And then when they'd leave, they would leave the trash everywhere. So we, we amended our deed restrictions to uh, not allow that anymore. So I, I will tell you, I wouldn't want one in my neighborhood. Hey, Mr. Can I, can I interrupt for just one second? You indicated you wanted close to a, a significant fee, but on your website, uh, that you sent out to, I, I believe everybody, you have on the A, B, and B thing, $45 a night. So I'm I'm hearing some conflicting. That's the, that's the monthly, because if you want to reserve um, by day, you can't get that rate. Well, now, wait a minute. That's so the, the 30 days is what I have on there as the $45 a night. Well, I don't see that $45 a night. 30, the 30 days, 30 days, because I can only charge uh, 30 days minimum so that's why the rate is lower now if i'm able to do the weekly the rate will be higher okay what i'm hearing some i'm hearing some significant changes in your uh answer to the question of what you charge month to month is different because people i asked for, for people to sign a lease two but bed one bath large fenced yard which is not totally fenced in, by the way. You have a large gate in front of it that's open. Or actually, there is no gate. Um, you know, I just haven't seen. I don't know if the pictures on the website are updated because I did knock down um, one fence when I owned both properties. But um, now the fence is back up. And I've always had a gate over here, so it is completely fenced. Yeah, there. The, this and is different. Well, this is let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish, please. Sure. This website is dated 12 23 2018 at 9 48 a.m. and it clearly states, Welcome to sunny Florida, house, two bedroom, one bath, sleeps five, $45 per night. So, you know, well, if, you, if you try to uh, book, it'll not allow you to book less than 30 days, and again, that's why I have that fee. Okay. Uh, any, other, any other discussion? Mr. Chair, this is David Goldstein. Yes, Dave. I guess I would caution the Planning Commission about relying too much on how much she's charging, you know, to use the short term rental. I, I realize that the duration of her rentals may be relevant to your decision, but the county doesn't really regulate how much he charges or doesn't charge for use of the facility. So I wouldn't place too much weight on how much he's choosing to charge for the use of the facility. I, I see how I see how questions about the duration of her rentals would be relevant, but I'm not sure how how much he's charging is relevant to your decision. I hear, I hear you. Mr. Chairman, I, I just say that I have no objection to the, to the use as intended. I understand the conversation about the, the collection of the tax and the, the rate and the like, but I, again, I think that, you know, we're losing sight of the fact of what the, what the use of the property is. And I just go on record with saying I have no, no objection to that. All right. Is that a motion? Is that a motion, Chris? I will make it a motion. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve item PC5. All right. We have a motion uh, to approve uh, item PC5. Or do we have a second? I'll second it, Peter Hansel. Okay. Peter's seconding it. So, uh, any further discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor of the motion by way of roll call vote. Signified by saying aye, opposed nay. Aye. Michael Cox? Nay. Peter Hansel? Aye. Christopher Poole? Aye. Chairman Charles Gray? Aye. Which passes for Okay, that was all that was on the agenda for today. Perhaps David may want to talk about moving forward and the 
uh, concept of hybrid virtual meetings. So Denise, is this the last meeting of the Planning Commission for this? This is the last meeting of the Planning Commission for June. Okay, so their next meeting will be where? Our next meeting uh, will be in Dade City, uh, according to the calendar at the historic Pasco County Courthouse. Okay, so the big difference with your future meetings is you're going to have to have a quorum physically present at that meeting. Um, how are we going to go about deciding that? Denise? Like that I'll, 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 I'll volunteer. <laughs> okay, I'll volunteer. We got well, how many do we need? Three. So form. It depends on whether it's an item that um, requires the school board to vote or not. Um, I think it's either three or four. Is that right, Denise? It's three when the school board doesn't have to vote on the item. Yeah. And it's four if the school board does, correct? Yes, correct. So the way the hybrid virtual meeting rules are going to work is that a quorum of the planning commission will need to be physically present at the advertised location of the meeting. The other members can participate virtually just like you're doing now. Um, as long as you've got either some health reason or you just want to maintain social distancing from the remaining members. Now, there's nothing to say that you can't all physically go um, to the advertised location of the meeting. That's really, but we at a minimum, we need a quorum to attend. So I think Denise is going to have to coordinate with you all as to who, which of you be there in person to constitute the quorum. And then which of you will be attending virtually? Um, okay. Denise, is that accurate? They would coordinate, that would be coordinated through you? Yes, it'll co it'll be coordinated through myself or the, the agenda coordinator, uh, either uh, Patty Christ or um, Paris Hatzelaris. The, the other major change with the hybrid virtual meeting rules is that phoning in will no longer be an option. The oh, only way for the public to participate There'll be three ways the public can participate. One will be through WebEx, just like you're seeing now. Another will be emails, which we currently allow. You can send in emails and have those read out loud. The third one, which will be new, will there will be public comment kiosks in the lobby of the West Pasco Government Center and in the lobby of the East Pasco Government Center, where people can show up and speak at a touchless video monitor um, and address the planning commission or the board or whoever the voting members are from that kiosk. And there'll be a member of staff at those kiosks that lets them know when they can speak. So that's three ways the public can participate. Applicants can either do WebEx or they, if they really wanted to go to the kiosk, they could do that as well. Um, although I anticipate most applicants will stay on WebEx because that's what they're doing now. Um, the, the as far as roll call votes go, it, we're still going to require roll call votes as long as one or more of you are participating virtually. If you're all in the same location, we don't have to have a roll call vote. You can just do voice votes like you used to. Okay. So it's similar to what we're doing now, except that quorum if you have to physically be at the location and um, you know we're not gonna have phone in anymore okay now I don't know how long this is going to last uh, it'll really be up to the board of county commissioners how long we do these hybrid virtual meetings and it'll in part depend on where we stand with the COVID recovery um, but for now the board wants to minimize the number of people that are physically in the boardrooms um, to avoid the spread of COVID. Okay. Any questions about that? Sounds good. Sounds like you're going to have to be there at all times, Chris. It's good plus Chris. That's right. I can be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some agendas where there's nothing Chris can vote on. Um, yeah, well, you never know if I break something up. You know, you <laughs> You know, I don't know how to work it in terms of logistics. You know, maybe some of you are closer to Dade City. 
um, some of you are closer to Newport Ritchie and maybe you can kind of figure out which of you need to be the quorum in Newport Ritchie and which of you need to be the quorum in the city, but that's something you can coordinate through Denise and the agenda coordinator. All right. How many can you fit in your Tesla? Um, <laughs> with social distancing, one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll figure it out. I guess you're going to send out the notices, Denise, and we'll, we'll respond uh, accordingly. Yes, I think that the, and, and um, this is actually being presented to the board on the 30th of June. So um, I, I don't know that there are going to be any changes to this, but uh, that should be the date of adoption. So July 9th, which is your next planning commission meeting, that'll be in, in Dade City. And um, I'll, I'll be there physically. I believe the clerk will be there as well. And, um, and then the quorum, and I don't know, David, are you going to be there physically as well or? For the July 14th, I mean, for which yeah. meeting after? For the next planning commission meeting? Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't decided yet. I, well, I'm not, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. It, it's, it, there isn't a requirement for anyone from the county attorney's office to physically be there, right? No, the only people that have to, have to physically be there is a quorum of the voting members. Okay. For everybody else, it's Go optional, ahead. but I recognize that some staff and county attorney's office and the clerk, you know, may want to physically attend, which all, which is all yeah, possible I, as, long, as long as we don't have more than 50 people in the boardroom. Okay. Which, which seems unlikely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, Denise, David, everybody, you did a great job. Thanks everybody. Thank you. I Thank you for your patience. Motion to adjourn. I have one. So moved. Okay. Second. I second. see you smile on Mike. That's a second. All in favor. Aye. All right. Have a great weekend. All right. Take care. Thanks. Okay.